Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home with the Code Hub. Hey there, welcome back. I'm Matt from the Code Hub. Uh, welcome back to Coding at Home or Augmented Reality at Home as we've been kind of pitching these last few sessions. Um, we're going to be doing some more augmented reality work today. Um, we had a little brainstorm yesterday, genius brainstorm, where we thought that it'd be really fun to try to build a lunar lander game. Now, if you were tuned into yesterday's session, we used Reality Composer to launch a rocket from the ground into a pink planet. We didn't intend to launch it into the pink planet, but we launched it into the pink planet and sort of half landed it um, if the surface of the pink planet was pretty squishy. So not, not a bad effort. But then I was thinking back to some of the games that I enjoyed when I was a kid way back in the day, like the Lunar Lander games. And I thought, you know what, we could kind of do something fun where we built an augmented reality version of one of those lunar landers. So that's what we're going to work on today with Reality Composer. Um, before I get to that, I want to do a plug. This is not a paid advert. This is not a paid ad unless Imagine Labs want to pay me for this. But uh, we got this yesterday in the, the mail. We backed these guys a long time ago on Kickstarter. Um, it's called Imagine Labs, and it's an Imagine Charm. Um, basically, you download an app, and you can code in Python. Uh, it gives you a matrix to, that you can specify which point that you want to have lit up, and um, just like a lot of the grid programming that we've been doing so far, and um, then you show it off. You wear that that thing around. You can also get more advanced and add in things like go off and check a weather service and have the, um, the charm update with maybe a cloud image or, or, uh, or sun. It's up to you. It's, it's a pretty cool little thing to play around with. Um, you can grab them off their website. I get no money for any of this unless they desperately want to give me some. Um, I just think it's a great little toy and another way to, to sort of exercise those programming muscles. So check it out if you like. Um, they're about 92 euro. Um, it's a great team uh, in Sweden. And um, yeah, it, it's worth checking out. All right, enough of that, enough of the plug. We're not doing any more shills. Let's get over to uh, coding our Lunar Lander game. So I'm gonna go off and open up Reality Composer. And because our Friday sessions are usually a little bit of a, a step back, um, if you haven't done any of this work with us before, what you're going to do is you're going to go off to the App Store. You're just going to have a search for Reality Composer. There we go. I'm going to hit search. And the very first result is this Reality Composer. It's an app uh, from Apple. Uh, it's for free. So make sure you grab that. And this is what we're going to be playing around with. You can see you can build these pretty amazing augmented reality scenes. There's a there's a chessboard that they built that looks like it's on an actual table. Um, there's some other sports gear we have. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to open up my copy of Reality Composer now. Uh, now this is a project I was just playing around with. So let's go back uh, to our main projects. So this is what you're going to see when you first launch. Reality Composer, um, probably without so many projects. This is the one that we were playing around with yesterday. I'm going to open it up just to show us what what we were able to do with Reality Composer so far. So we have this scene to start with. We have a moon. We have a planet. So we wanted this to orbit around the planet. We have one rocket ship that's going to get launched when we tap on it. This rocket ship is just a backup. Um, it'll spin when we tap on it as well. And we set that up with behaviors that we're going to explore a little bit in our lunar lander game. And then you can see also here we can define materials for our objects. So in this case, we're, this is the scenes properties. And it's concrete. So this, this ground here, this grid, is behaving as if it were made out of concrete. So let's try, let's show this off. So I'm gonna, to preview in augmented reality, I'm gonna hit this AR button. 
And I'm going to move my chair out of the way so I can move around. One of my favorite things about augmented reality programming is you do get up out of your chair a lot more. So there we go. It discovered the plane. That's the desk. There are rocket ships. If you recall, we have to go look up for our planet. Oh, there it is right over our head. So now what we're going to do to actually test this out in, in this mode, I can tap on my rocket and move it around to place it where I want it to be placed. I can use the green arrow to lift it off the surface a little bit. I can use the red arrow to move it left or right. And I can use the blue arrow to move it forward or back. So now we've gone from operating on our X and Y grid to an X, Y, Z grid where we have a Z axis added as well. So once I'm happy with where I've placed my, my objects, I'm going to go hit the play button here. And I can see my scene. I can see the planet. We should see the moon rotating around. There's the moon in orbit. There it goes. That's cool that our moon is orbiting. If we tap on the rocket ship, the other one starts spinning. That one takes off. We added the code to have it rotate and, well, sink into the planet. That's not great. So that was our lunar lander from yesterday. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a new project. So I'm going to hit the plus button up here. And right off the bat, I'm going to actually pick horizontal for tabletop and horizontally based experiences. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to rename this thing. So I'm going to tap on new project 12. And I'm going to call this Lunar Lander. All right, cool. I've got my Lunar Lander project. I'm going to tap on that. I'm going to pick a horizontal anchor. Uh, if you remember when we started off our, our uh, rocket project, we started off with, uh, with these two elements here. So I'm pinching with two fingers to zoom in. So we have a cube and then we have this text thing here. So if I just tap on the cube and then tap on it again, the contextual menu comes up. So I'm going to delete it. I don't want to have this cube here. And then we're going to tap on select to edit. Same thing. This is another object in our scene, just like the cube was. So we're going to tap on that once, tap on it again, and then hit delete. So now we just have our scene. Same thing, same as before. It's uh, concrete. We've got scene physics so that objects will collide with the plane. If we tap on this plane option here, we could have it collide. We could have objects collide with the plane or with nothing, so they'd fall right through our desk or our whatever flat surface we've identified in our AR scene. We can change gravity. This is kind of cool that you can't do a normal everyday gravity. I wish for volleyball playing, um, but you can change the gravity from 9.8 meters per second squared to something else, either something lighter or something heavier. So we're going to do that for our lunar lander because we're trying to land on the moon. So let's make gravity a little bit less strong. We'll bring it down to 2.6. This is just a guess. We're going to refine this as we go through. So we've got a lunar lander. Well, what, what are we going to land on the moon? Let's, let's add a rocket first off to land on the moon. So we're going to go up here to the plus button. That brings up my content library. I can import objects, 3D objects that I might have lying around. Now, I don't have any 3D objects lying around, but I'm going to scroll through. These are our basic shapes. We saw our cube already on our surface. We have a donut looking thing. We have text. We have these signs that are kind of handy. Charts, chess pieces, events. So we could add balloons. We could add a whole bunch of balloons. That would be kind of fun. Games. 
Pool. All right, we keep going. There's a bunch of sports stuff. We could simulate some games out here. There we go. There's what we want. Let's add this rocket to our scene. So the way this game is going to work is, and if we tap on our rocket, I'm just going to tap once. You can see now it's got a ring around it, and I can edit where it's placed on the, on the, in the scene. We can see its position here. This thing here, if, if this isn't showing up, you tap on this button here, brings up the properties for our objects when they're selected. I can give this object a name, so I'm going to give this a name of rocket ship. We'll only have one in this case. We won't have the two. We won't have a backup like we did in our other one. This transform stuff, this is where we can define the position it's in. So right now it's X position is it's right in the center of whatever flat surface we identify. It's 0.35 centimeters above the surface. So if I tap on the grid and I roll it up, I can see, I guess maybe it's, it's off the ground a little bit. And our Z axis at zero centimeters. So it's almost dead center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit reset though, to set all of those values back to zero. So now our rocket ship will land, will appear exactly on the, the grid. We can rotate our object. So we could do something like, like this, maybe rotate it 90 degrees. We'll hit return. We could have the thing fire off at, at our scene. That's not really what I want. So I'm going to reset that rotation. We can change the scale, make it a huge rocket ship or a small one. Now, if the slider is giving you fits and you can't get back, back to 100, you can actually just tap on that value inside scale, and then you're good to go. Down here underneath, this is the transform section. Now, if I tap on this arrow, it'll bring it back up. And then I can see, okay, I'm just focused on my, my look and feel of this rocket ship. So I can choose stylize, I can choose realistic, I can choose iconic. Tell you what, we're going to do a kind of lo-fi game, so let's do a sort of lo-fi look. We can choose matte paint. Let's make this plastic looking. And we're going to change the material color here to maybe... We'll make it orange. How about that? So if I tap on the color again, it, it shrinks back up. The next thing we want to do is we want to pick our physics. Because we want to have it participate in physics. Right now, if we raise this thing up, in fact, let's do that. So we're, we don't want to start, we want to land this rocket ship is the point of this game. We don't want to start on the ground. The, the game would be over right away. So let's go back to that transform panel and let's change the Y position. Let's make it one meter off the ground, just for kicks, not Q meters off the ground, one meter off the ground. And that's one centimeter. So let's say one M. Tell you what, it's doing centimeters. Let's say a hundred. There we go. Now it's one meter. So if I pinch and zoom out, I can see my rocket ship is floating in the air. If I want to test out this scene, physics and behaviors and everything, I don't have to turn on augmented reality. I can actually just hit the play button here and it'll show me, okay, great. This is what my scene will look like when I render it somewhere. So there's my rocket ship floating in air. I can zoom in. No, looking cool. All right. I can also preview it with AR. So I'll hit stop and I'll go back to AR. And now I do have to get up out of my chair again. And we have a look. There it's detected the desk. It seems like everything's in place. If I go up, up oh, there's my rocket up there. Cool. It's kind of near the ceiling. Let's hit the play button to see it in action. Let's go come back down here. Let's hit the play button. Okay, cool. Well, it's definitely not participating in physics because if it were, if I just chucked an object up a meter over my desk, it would probably fall back down. So let's, let's turn on physics for this guy. 
So our object is still selected. We've got the green ring around it. And I've got my properties over here. I'm going to go turn on participates in physics. And then I get another option. If I scroll up, I can see it can have a fixed motion type or it can have a dynamic motion type. We'll get to that in a second. We can choose the material it's made out of. So it could be concrete, could be ice, could be lead, plastic, wood. Let's make it out of, uh, well, maybe let's make it out of concrete. That seems maybe the right density that we, we want to have it. Um, we can also choose a collision shape. This is going to come into play later when we try to detect if we've collided with the, the ground, it has to detect, okay, well, what, where, where are my edges on this particular object? And, and how are they intersecting with other objects like the, the desk in front of us? Sorry, right, so we've turned on fixed motion for our ship. Let's try previewing this and see what we have. Okay. All right, well, it's still floating in midair, so that's not, that's that's not what we want either. So let's see, let's go back down to the physics section. We're gonna tap on fixed here. And we're gonna change it to dynamic. All right, and that's it, that's all we're gonna change. It, it's helpful when you're doing development, even with augmented reality like this, whether it's coding or whether it's dragging and dropping and changing properties, it's helpful to make few changes, check out what you've done, see if it works the way you expect it to work or not, uh, and then go back and tweak some more. Because if you make a whole bunch of changes all at once, uh, and then you try something and it doesn't work, you have to, maybe you have to undo all the things that you just did, and or maybe you don't know which change you made actually um, affected the behavior you wanted to, to affect. So let's hit the play button up here. Okay, all right, there's our, our rocket ship landed. Now it's a bit, it's a bit big. So maybe we'll make it a bit smaller for this, this game. We'll change the scale of this thing. But that's good, it fell back down into the plane. It landed on the plane. No major damage. Let's actually go back out of AR mode so we can see our object a little bit better. Now some of the tools that we went over yesterday for viewing our objects, uh, looked like this, right? We went over to this this button here and we could choose to frame the scene or frame the selected. So I'm going to hit frame selected and you can see that now my rocket ship goes to the dead center of my view. So I'm going to zoom in on that. We're going to change the scale, maybe make it about half the size. It's still a meter above the, the ground. Everything else is zeros. If I hit play, I can see it falls to the ground. Okay, well that's not the right behavior. We don't want that kind of behavior. We don't want the, the rocket ship to fall over. We'd ideally like it to land very gently. So there's something we can do to, to help that. In, in our other, in our other um, reality kit, reality composer demo, we were building it so that you could tap on the rocket and that would make it take off. And all we did was we moved by, we used a certain behavior. So let's go check out those behaviors. So I, this is the behaviors um, tech tool. So right now I have no behaviors defined on this scene. It's just normal physics turned on on my rocket. I'm gonna hit the plus button to add a behavior. All right, so when we do that, we now have this list here of, we can have a tap and flip, tap and play sound, tap and add force, start hidden or wait and show. And then if we scroll up, we have proximity and jiggle. So when the camera gets nearby, the object will jiggle, or we can create our own behavior. So all of these are useful, but I'm gonna, we're gonna stick with the custom behavior. And let's see, we're gonna call this um, well, we won't name it yet because maybe we're not sure what it's going to do. Let's add a trigger for this behavior by tapping in this square here. 
So you can see our choices again, our tap, scene start, proximity to camera, collide, notification. Basically all of those behaviors that were sort of pre-baked in, like proximity and jiggle, tap and flip, we can implement all of those with a custom behavior just as well as we can with the built-in one. That's just trying to save you a bit of time. Okay, so we have our, we, let's do, um, how about we do a tap? Now we have to pick an affected object. So what is gonna uh, respond to the tap? So let's go pick it. So we can scroll around with one finger. I'm, I'm rotating the scene around. I can tap on my rocket ship. Okay, I'm gonna hit done. Now I'm gonna add an action. So I'm gonna hit the plus button over here and we see a few other options. So we can emphasize the object, which will run some animations to maybe grow or shrink the, the object. We can show it, we can hide it. This is what we used in the other one, this move, rotate, scale by. So one way we could build this game, maybe it's not, it won't be great, but we could have it um, move down on the Y axis. So if we hit move, rotate, scale by, it picked our affected object already. It picked the same one we tapped. We can change that by hitting choose and choosing something else, but these are the only, that's the only object on the screen right now. We can set a duration. So how long it's going to animate this movement for, we can choose the animation type. So whether how it eases in and out. So ease in, ease out just means it goes a bit slower at the beginning speeds up through the middle of the animation and then ease out it would be where it slows down through the end of the animation. We can change that type by tapping on this and we can pick ease in, ease out or none. So it could be constant speed throughout. Now this is where it changes the position by this much. So if we tap on this object, it'll move over by 38.64 centimeters. So just like we did with our properties, we could hit clear and we could say, well, we want it to go down by so many uh, Y degrees. So we could say minus, say 10. So minus, it'll go down by 10 centimeters every time. We won't set a rotation on it. We could have it scale, so get larger or smaller as it goes. So let's see. That's cool. That's our animation. I hit the play button here to, to watch what that animation does. That might be a way to do our lunar lander game. Let's, let's try that out. I'm going to hit the play button up here to preview it and try, try out this action. Oh, you know what? Unfortunately it falls before I have a chance to get to it. But if I tap on it, it still, it changes its Y position by minus 10 centimeters every time. So it looks like my rock is kind of slowly inching its way across the floor. That's not what I want to have happen. So one thing I could do to build my lunar lander game is I could turn off physics on the, on the rocket ship and, and just have it, you know, just tap on it and have it get down to the bottom. That might not be a great game um, because it's, we know it's going to move 10 centimeters every time. Someone's just going to have to just tap on the ship every time. Maybe we want to add a little bit of finesse to it. So what if we leave physics on, on our, uh, our rocket ship? And what if we change this, this animation? So if uh, the action sequence right now, we have move scale, rotate by, I'm going to tap on the move scale, rotate by text. And then I'm going to hit delete when the menu comes up. So I, what I had was I had this. I tapped on this text here. I actually just tapped for a little while. So you can see it, it raises up so I can kind of drag it around. And then if I let go, there's a contextual menu there so I can delete it. Let's look at some of the other action sequences we might be able to use. So we have move, rotate, scale by. We have add force, we have orbit. We've used that, we've used spin. 
We can use change scene. I know some of the guys downstairs have built an amazing game where it goes through uh, different scenes. And when you get to the end of a particular scene and you've sort of finished that level, uh, it uses this change scene uh, action sequence to go to the, the next scene they built. Uh, you can play a sound. I know some people downstairs have played sounds. It's kind of cool. Uh, music an animation from a 3d file you can have a look at the camera all right none of these this notify is something we can use to hook it up to um, xcode if we're building a full-fledged application so tell you what let's play around with this add force because we haven't played around with that on um in a session yet i know some people have but we haven't on the video yet so what we're going to do is pick an affected object well we want to add force to this guy and we can add a certain velocity to it. Well, let's try playing that. Okay, oh wow, that's a lot of force. Maybe we wanna apply a little less force. Oh, five kilometers an hour. Okay, that's, that's not too bad. Let's even ease it off a little bit more. Let's go, how about that much? Let's see. Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough. Maybe we'll go back up to two and a half. How about that? We'll type in here two point five, not twelve point five, two point five. If we play it, all right, that's not too bad. Let's try playing that all together. Okay, well, okay, well, there's my. I'm applying the force. It just looks like it's hopping. Looks like I'm just torturing the poor rocket. So that's that's not great. Um, let's add a button on our screen so that we can apply the force with that. So we're gonna go back up here to the plus button and we're gonna add a big button. Let's go use one of the built-in ones. So I'm gonna tap on basic. Uh, and let's make the button, actually here, this looks like a likely candidate for a button. We're gonna move the behaviors out of the way. So I'm gonna tap this button to get rid of the behaviors. All right, so there's my button that actually looks like that guy's gonna land on. So I'm gonna move it out of the way a little bit. If I tap on the grid and just drag around with one finger, I can get ready to grab that. I'm gonna drag it over here out of the way. Okay, so that's my move, my uh, force button. So that's gonna just have the rockets fire so it just pushes up a little bit. Let's hit the properties inspector. We'll make that, let's see, we can make that a little bit bigger. We can change the diameter. The nice thing about these basic objects is they have a lot more options you can configure. So let's change the diameter of this thing. So it's a bit fatter, bigger target for us. We can make the height a little bit bigger. Cause I want to make this big cause this is going to be my tapping target. So if somebody's walking around with an iPad in their hand, they're gonna tap on this thing, wherever it is. We can change the bevel radius, make it a bit rounder, so you don't cut yourself on the corners. And for kicks, we can make it participate in physics, so if things collide with it, they'll, they'll react. Maybe that doesn't make sense, maybe we wanna turn that off, but let, let's leave it on for now. Uh, we'll make it nice and shiny. All right, cool. There's our button. It's all all done. We've got our position. It's off the ground. So let's maybe make that zero to put it right on the ground. So we know where our buttons are anyway. And now let's go back to the behaviors item. So now, now that you've had your, you've placed your button, ideally, you've played around with it a little bit. You've given it a, a size. You've given it a a new height maybe you've given a nice shiny paint job maybe you've changed the paint color let's do that just for kicks before we go off to behaviors all right that's looking kind of cool let's go to behaviors then all right so hopefully you've ha you have your button on the scene now you have a, a a rocket ship up there if you're say like like me and you have i'm now dragging with two fingers and you've dragged with two fingers instead of one, one of these times by accident, and then maybe pinched way in and you're stuck like this. 
You can always hit this button here to say frame scene and it'll zoom right out and then you can zoom back in to get a little better view of your objects. All right, so cool. Now we've got our button and our rocket ship. I'm gonna hit the behaviors button. Now, instead of when I tap, what I wanna have people tap is the button, not this rocket ship. So I'm gonna choose a new object. So I can see that one object is affected and I can see the rocket ship is highlighted in green. I'm gonna tap that rocket ship to take off the highlight. And now to get to the button, I'm gonna put two fingers on my grid, anywhere on the grid, and drag up. That's a great way to get around the scene without spinning around. One of the problems I have with 3D environments, and this is definitely my problem, not the problem with the software, is if you grab with a finger and you start twirling around, you kind of get motion sickness because everything's just whirling around you. So if you use two fingers, you can actually navigate like a 2D space. It'll kind of freeze it in space for you. So I want to tap on my button because that's my object that I want to have. When you tap on it, I want to apply a bit of force. I'm going to hit done. And let's try this out. I'm going to tap with one finger to get it back on the screen. If I hit play, okay, it still happens a little too fast. So maybe we need to turn down gravity even more. Because right now we have our basic game. We know that we're going to tap that button to add a little force to the rocket and try to keep it off the ground until it can land nice and gently and not flip over. But now we're just playing around with the playability of this game. It's The gravity is too strong still. It, it pulls that rocket ship down too hard. So what we're going to do is go hit the properties button. Now, right now we have the scene. We have nothing selected here. So it's the scene that we're looking at. Gravity is still 2.6 meters per second squared. Let's turn that down. Let's try turning it down to maybe one meter per second squared. Let's see what that looks like. That's a little better. That might give us time if we hit play. Ugh, not, not great. So that, that's cool. That might help our playability of the game a little bit. Let's try it in augmented reality now. So I'm gonna go off stood up so I can get my AR ready. I'm gonna hit the AR button and turn it on, place it in the scene, and move the iPad to start. Okay, there's a problem with this. My button is actually hovering over my chair, so I'm actually gonna drag that over. Let's put it on the edge of the desk. There we go. Can we see our our rocket ship. Can't really see it, so that's a bit of a problem, especially with our uh, the fact that our, our iPad is tethered to the, the computer, so you guys can see the feed. So let's let's try it out. Let's see what we have though. I'm gonna hit play. I'm tapping the button. Oh dear. Alright, well that didn't work out so well. I uh, I kind of landed off the table and bounce down again. We're gonna do one more thing and then we're gonna get to keep playing with this Lunar Lander a little bit more on uh, on Monday. We're gonna add a couple of other features to it. But So we have this one, this one button here that controls how our, our ship, which is back up in the sky, how, it, um, how much force is applied. Maybe what we wanna do is make the game a little more interesting for for folks, and we want to add a second button that also applies a force, but maybe it's a little bit stronger or maybe a little bit weaker. So you can use sort of either two fingers or, or two hands to manipulate the buttons to try to get that rocket to land gently. So let's go, let's try that. Let's, I'm going to tap on this button. I'm going to tap on it again, and I'm going to say duplicate. All right, I'm going to move it over here. I'm actually going to give it a different color um, so I don't get too confused. I might even give it a label. So we don't want black. Let's do maybe maybe that. There we go. Green and, and, uh, and purple. That's cool. 
So we've got our second button. Now if I go up to my behaviors tab, I can see that I still just got one affected object for that tap. I want to create a new behavior. Before I do that, I'm going to label this one. I'm going to say, maybe call this medium force. Because that'll be the, the button that I use to really make sure that the, the rocket gets a little bit of a boost upwards. I'm going to add another behavior by hitting the plus button. I'm going to go pick, actually, I'm going to pick tap and add force. So you see that it adds the action sequence for me. It adds the trigger for me. I've got a little triangle here that's basically telling me that I don't have, that I have some errors inside here. So if I tap on the triangle, it says, oh, the affected objects are not set. And if I tap on this, it's gonna tell me the same thing. The affected objects aren't set. So let me go choose the affected objects. I want the thing that I tap to be I'm going to tap with two fingers and drag to be this green button. And the thing I want to add force to is going to be this rocket. So I'm going to go over here. I could either hit done here. I could go over here and hit choose. And it tells me up top, select the affected objects for the add force action. So I'm going to tap on that. So now this is going to give me a huge boost instead of the other one that gave just a tiny boost. Maybe that's, maybe that's the way we want to go. Give ourselves a lot more time to think about it. So let's do that when we're going to, so we're going to name this. I just tapped on the behavior name over here in this little list. I'm going to call this massive force. And let's check it out. So we should have our button hooked up. I don't see any of those little warning triangles anymore. So let's hit the augmented reality button. Okay, cool. Did we add it somewhere? All right, they're over here. Again, we want to move these guys back onto the desk. This one as well, back onto the desk. Maybe they're a bit too big. But let's let's play this and see how it see how it works. Well, all right. So we had because these are have a physics body, we actually had our ship land on one of these things. So let's hit the stop button and let's try playing that again. Yeah, we had the ship fall out of the sky, hit one of the buttons, and bounce off uh, <laughs> down onto the the plane somewhere else. All right. So maybe that didn't work out so well. But we'll start refining this a little bit on Monday when we try to finish off our Lunar Lander game. Hope you enjoyed today. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with these reality sessions. Uh, if you have any suggestions, recommendations, requests, uh, definitely shoot them in uh, to us uh, live at thecodehub.ie, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye.